Hello friends and welcome back to our Fast API tutorial. In this tutorial, which is number 24 in our series, we are going to be discussing sub-dependencies. We've kind of seen this a little bit. I showed, I showed this to you a, a couple videos ago, but we're going to go into it in a little more detail here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, you can see we've got our app up and running. We've got everything going over here. We're going to set up a query extractor um, method. It'll be a string or none equals none. And all we're going to do is return Q. And then we're going to also set up a, um, let's do query or body extractor. Let's see if this works. Q is a string which depends on um, query extractor. And then last query, we'll just say string or none equals body none. If not Q, return last query, else return Q. Let's get black working. Okay, there we go. Next, app.post item async def um, try query, we'll call it. Okay, and now what we're going to do, query or uh, body, sorry, query or body, um, string equals depends, query or body extractor, return q or body is query or body. Okay, so let's take a look at this for just a second. So this is kind of a stupid example, but this is just to kind of demonstrate what happens here. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to say hello, and we're going to say string right there. So you can see for query or body, we got hello. If we get rid of this, let's see what happens. You can see we get the word string. Let's make this world and execute. Now, so this is a very simple demonstration, but let's just take a look to see what's going on here. So we are trying this query. We've got this post method. Um, and you can see here we've got a query parameter. You can see we're, we're posting with nothing here. We were posting with the Q equals hello before. So the way this works is this query or, or body, which is a path parameter that we actually end up returning here, which is a string. It depends on the query or body extractor. Okay, great. Let's look at the query or body extractor. Well, query or body extractor passes in Q, which is a string, which itself itself depends on query extractor. Okay, what does query extractor do? Well, it just returns our string Q. Okay, so it's either going to be a Q or a none for this value right here. And then it also takes in last query, which we're actually defining as a, um, a body parameter, just so that we can pass it in here, so that we're not passing in two separate um, query extractors, although we could. We would just have to name this something else because it, if you were to pass it in twice, it just it wouldn't recognize the second one or the first one. I'm not sure which. But what we're doing here, we're passing in last query as a body parameter. If we don't have a query queue, then it will return this last query. I don't know why it's called why I called it that. That's what it showed up in the docs, but I'm kind of veering away from the docs for this part. So this itself grabs this queue, which depends on query extractor. If that exists, then we return queue. And we should actually instead, I like doing it this way. If queue, return queue, and then just return last query. Okay, so that's kind of the, the flow here. So as, as we've seen in, I think it was uh, part 22, you can see I had this async def hello, 
where it returned world. And then we had the common parameters with this extra blah parameter right here. It just kind of tacks things on. So a request comes in, it checks this depends, which depend itself depends on query extractor. So first thing it does is it grabs query extractor, this queue. Then it also grabs the last query, and then it returns all of that information in query or body to this path operation right here. And it's gonna work because this returns a string, this is a string or none. If we were to say int, then there is some type coercion that would be going on um, because this needs to be a string, okay? So there's, there's definitely some checking that you're gonna need to handle in doing things like this, okay? Um, that's kind of it for this video. Um, these, the, the concepts are, um, they can be a little confusing. So um, I would suggest you go in and you try and kind of play with these yourself, kind of see how the functionality goes. You can try this with a cookie parameter or another query parameter right there if you want to do it like that or, you know, something like that. Um, you can make it a path parameter, you know, whatever, whatever you want really. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this video. Uh, in the next one, we're going to, we're going to get a little more detailed. Um, we're going to be using, um, the, the dependencies kind of in, in the operation decorators. So instead of, instead of using it in here, we're going to kind of look to generalize it a little bit more and put it in the actual decorator itself. Okay. I will see you in that video.